Yo, what is up, friends, foes, and members of the Omni Council? My name is Damian Camille, and I'm gonna and I'm the Omni King, but I'm gonna try and keep it on the low today. My roommate is sick, and as I've mentioned before, he's in the room right across from me. Hello, Neko. How have you been today? How was your morning? Um, good news. I think the internet issue should be fixed. I talked with tech support last night uh, with my roommate's assistance, and there was apparently an update on the modem that was supposed to be done ISP side, but they never did it. She didn't really give an explanation. She's just like, it's not something you can do. It was supposed to be done on our end. Um, and it just never went through. So she updated that. She's getting, sending us some additional equipment that'll help stabilize the signal, which would help for the wireless devices. I'm a wired device after all. Um, and uh, yeah, so generally, so that should be a huge assistance in keeping, um, hopefully keeping things stable and, you know, like stuff doesn't drop. Sounds good, Neko. Oh, and another excellent piece of news. So I've mentioned this before on stream that part of the reason I can't fix these tech issues spread away is because only my it's my roommate's house, my roommate's account, and like with anything, they only ever talk with account holders. And that's fair. You know, that's a security thing. I'm not gonna argue with that. However, we did get my name put on the account for tech uh, technical support reasons only. So, like, I can't modify the plan or anything financially, but if the internet goes down or if there's an issue with the modem or anything like that, I now have the ability to actually call the ISP and handle the matter without my roommate having to be involved. Because, you know, dude works two jobs. He leaves at, like, 8 in the morning, comes home at, you know, almost 10 p.m., last thing he wants me to do is harass him about the internet so <laughs> i'm glad we finally managed to get that that sorted out because we've talked about doing that for like literally like almost since i moved in you know two and a half years ago so i also have food in front of me yeah so we won't really know if there's going to be a problem until there is one or there isn't. But the person we talked to said that, you know, that, that are, like, I explained to her some of the situations I went through, some of the fixes I've had to do. And when she, she said that installing the update should solve most of the problems. Another thing she did, and she said that this may, could, this might have been influencing things too. So, I will admit, networking ha is not my strongest subject. I know some, but I don't know a lot. I set up the entire new network. She even complimented me on my password strength, and my roommate did not have a strong password previously. Um, and, um, but one thing, I, I'm mad that it slipped my mind, and she, she had to point it out, I, ha I had like a oh type moment. Um, where so there's no guest network on our network but i i do have the 2.4 and the 5g networks running however they have the same name and the same password meaning that devices are going to randomly switch between them which is going to stress out the stress out the modem right as well as cause various issues all right see you later neko thanks for dropping by um so she fixed that by renaming one of the networks something, you know, like basically what the network was, but then, you know, with like 2.4G on it. So now they have different names, so they, you know, they won't try to connect to the same two networks anymore. Um, and that should also potentially help stabilize things too. Like I'm actually watching my connection. Like even when I have a good connection, I see it fluctuate a little bit. Like I see it go from like, you know, four to four or forty seven hundred to you know forty four hundred. I'm watching; it's almost stable. 
at 4,600. So this is the, like, I don't think I've ever seen it look this stable before, but you know, hopefully I'm not talking out my ass here and it'll all work out. So with that said, let's get into the game. Uh, last time I played, uh, what audio track is it again? It is four. Uh, last time we played, we were literally just about to head up to the boss. Oh, uh, one thing I just remembered I wanted to do. I forgot once again to add in espers. So this was, I think, what was it, Fran that got? Who got Exodi? Who got, um, Hashmal? You did. Botched it. So that should be 10 espers. Let me go into the edits here. Uh, Bosch. Ash. Mall. All right. So let me just double count here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Okay. That makes sense because I'm about to do the 10th esper. Ready? Oh, let me just double check people's boards here too. Oh yeah, you're you're done. You're yeah. Those I think it's those two. Ash has something that can still be bought down here. Staff of Magi. So Ash has now officially purchased everything, so to speak. So the next Esper that comes out is pretty much the or one of the last Espers that can grant something good for my team. Um, and both of the or and it for that to happen though it needs 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 to go on Vaughn for it to be of actual usefulness. It will grant Vaughn this stuff here, which grants the team a second Hastiga user, which will be huge. Because I already only have one Protectiga user, one Protectiga and Shelga user, as both Chaos and um, Chichillion, whatever his name is, went to different characters than what I needed them to. I'm not, you know, like, I complain, but, like, I'm, I am happy, like, I could have literally just I reattempted the last playthrough, just better, right? Because I wouldn't have had to worry about the buffed enemies, and I could have just streamlined the whole thing. And you know, what? maybe I'll do that in the future, maybe not like years down the road. But right now, I don't care. Like right now, I like is this optimal by any means? Absolutely not. I think if I'm looking at the stuff here. The only things that could be considered semi-optimal uh, Bushy Time Battle Mage, maybe. With the understanding of the mod, it increases this better because you get the Gaia's armor, which can buff um, Quake, Quake, uh, you get the dragon mail, which can buff the Bushi's katana. Um, and Time Battle Mage actually has some pretty decent physical strength licenses, which can help buff katana damage. And then you have Hastiga. So there's not a whole lot of utility clogging up Pinello's... Or, you know, clogging up Pinello here. Ideally, though, the best Bushi user is Knight. Um... Or maybe Monk, depending on how you want to go about things. Because they have two incredibly high... They both have very high damaging stats. Knight's considered a bit better, though, because it's heavy armor. Um, but they both have high um, high damage classes, high, high H, or higher HP. Um, with the nature of the mod, Knight also allows shield for one of the Bushi's katanas. Um, then, what else? Um, 
Oh yeah, the reason why they're good though is because they both have um uh good late game white magics. Um Bowbreaker can also theoretically be good because Foebreaker and Bushi are literally damage dealers. That's the whole nature of the class is they have some techniques, but they don't have item licenses, they don't have um and they don't have uh uh, magic licenses. The whole thing is they're just attack. Um, it's just Foe Breakers, the um, attack version of it, and Bushi's the magic version of it. So that, you know, if you just want a pure DPS, like that's pretty much the class. You'd probably want to go Katana, though, uh, Fo though Knuckle. If you're playing base game, you're absolutely going Katana. In the base game, Foebreaker and Ulan are literally just buffers. That's all they are. They're classes you give to other jobs to make them better. Generally, Ulan or generally Foebreaker Shikari is a common uh, class as you use Foebreaker to buff Ninja Sword and Dagger. Um, and um, and Ulan generally goes to Archer as it buffs the damage of Bow. But you can also run Spear and have a lot more item licenses. That one's a lot less limited, but it's still it's still there. White Mage is generally relatively paired mostly with Mechanist. Um, though Knight can also work too, uh, just to give it a little bit of buffing. Um, reason why for Mechanist is because not only does Mechanist... Mechanist is second to having the most amount of item licenses in the game. Uh, Archer is slightly above it, but the reason why Mechanist is great is because you can equip the gun on White Mage and its low stats don't get affected too much by gun. Though Archer I've heard is also pretty good too. Uh, the mod makes Archer better because you don't have to run Holy Rod, right? And you can get a, uh, a an arrow. You can also get a uh, buff with Artemis Bow and Artemis Arrow, you can buff that. Um, Red Battle Mage is generally considered best to pair with Battle Mage, because Red Battle Mage gets almost nothing good late game. N almost nothing. All they can really provide is Dark, and unless you're running a particular Esper, uh, is basically Darka and Ardor. That's pretty much it. They can get Kyrga, which can be good with the Black Mage. You know, allows your Black Mage to have a healing spell. Um, but beyond that, there's not really much that Red Battle Mage offers. Mace isn't really a great damage dealing weapon. I'm not going to lie. Um, in this game, Mace is better because three of the strongest Maces in the game um, boost an element and then also is that element. So they basically just literally smash into pieces they also can boost spells and stuff um but yeah red battle mage like if you really like red battle mage shikari is not a bad combination um you can use the you know it gives shikari like you probably want to lean more into shikari on that one but it gives you access to protectica and shelga as well as late games uh damaging spells such as thunder Ga, blizzard Ga, and fire Ga. Um, on the same character. Um, you can also get permanent haste through running the Meza Blade, which is like the second strongest ninja sword in the game. Um, that's really pretty much it, but, um... I don't know. You can also, like, I also consider, like, Monk and Time Battle Mage is also a common combination, too. Um, at least in base game. I don't know. I always kind of, like, I try to balance my team out, especially with, like, the natures of Shel uh, Hastiga, Shelga, and stuff like that. So since only Time Battle Mage and Mechanist with an Esper, I always give that Esper to Mechanist. Every time. So I have two Hastiga users. Um, but... Personally, I think it'd be great to combine Time Battle Mage and Mechanist with either White Mage, um, Shikari, or Monk, and then give them the appropriate espers needed, so that way you have two classes that can cast both, um, 
Protectiga. Or you have three classes that can cast Protectiga and Shelga. Two that can cast Haste and Hastiga, but those Haste and Hastiga users can also cast um, Protectiga and Shelga, which can open up slots on your White Mage to cast um, Faith and Bravery on the team. And then you'd also be able to get, you'd also with the right Esper be able to get your Knight to cr uh, craft Bravery. Because while knights or knights get bravery for free, I believe. No, do they? No, it's down here. Yeah. Uh, it's monks that get bravery for free. Monks don't get access to uh, faith, though. Period. I think that one is Ultima, and then this one. No, I think this is no. That's Chaos. Yeah, that one's Ultima, and that one's Zodiac. Right, like I might actually like craft that out after this stream and just figure out like what would be like the ultimate like coverage team. Like obviously it'd probably be red battle mage, black mage, because red battle mage doesn't provide much. Um But you're you're also you also want to try and think like how can classes pair? Right? Like time battle mage is good, but it needs to pair with the class that can benefit from it. Mechanist is good, but it only provides really item licenses. It doesn't provide anything offensive. So it would need to go get paired with a class that's more offensive. Um, the Mechanist would probably pair best with Monk. Um, so that way Monk would, be, would have a lot more pressure. Monk wouldn't really benefit much from the... Like, there wouldn't really be a whole lot of magic power, but Monk would have access to Hastiga, Shelga, and Protectiga, which would be fantastic. Uh, which would put Shikari with Time Battle Mage, which is also not bad at all. Um, Time Battle Mage and Mechanist. Well, no, those, those wouldn't pair together. Yeah, Time Battle or Monk and Shikari would work, but Time or no, wait, I'm I'm just mixed my mind up with the exact same thing. Um, it'd be Monk in Time Battle Mage and Shikari Mechanist. But Mechanist, like I said, does not provide a whole lot of offensive ability to Shikari. To give you some example, um, I'm going to look up on the wiki right now the difference between what Monk, Mechanist, Time Battle Mage, and Shikari make in terms of uh, battle lore licenses. So the ones that buff strength. Shikari and what was the other one? Mechanist. Where's Monk? All right, Monk. Now I can already tell you, Monk gets the most. Monk has the highest amount of battle lores in the game out of any class. Um. So let's see. Um, battle lores, battle lores. So, so Mechanist gets three battle lores and seven magic lores. Time Battle Mage, which is actually fairly straight down the line on this one, if I recall correctly, gets nine ba or nine magic lores and eleven battle lores. Keep in mind there's sixteen battle lores in the game. At sorry, at most. Shikari gets six battle lores and five magic and monk gets all 16 battle lores monk has the highest hp and highest uh, base strength out of any class in the game so it is uh so yeah so like there's enough strength like on time battle mage to buff um and there's even a decent amount of magic lore because magic lore is the same uh too with uh 16 max and it's on black mage chloe hello how are you i am fantastic because i think i've solved all my internet problems 
Hopefully. You know, knock on wood and all that jazz. Chloe, did you see my recent uh, clips, though? Because I need your opinion on uh, my yelling clip. So this should be taking me to the boss, right? <laughs> now, is that yes to the internet or yes to the clips? <laughs> I'm gonna get Vaughn out. I'm gonna drop you. I'm gonna. I want to keep Ash forward. I guess I can keep you out. Oh yeah. Well, it would make sense to keep her out, wouldn't it? All right. I need to change you. <laughs> All I wanted was Ningwong. <laughs> I got Ningwong from uh, the the lantern right and a lot of guides said that you need c1 ningwong for her to be really for her to be any decent because it turns her attack into an aoe so i'm just like i'm just gonna pull i'm just gonna try my best to get ningwong that's all i care about and i first pull first pull yelling <laughs> so the title was not wrong i accidentally pulled yelling in one pull <laughs> yeah. I'll tell you though I plan to try so my goal for 3.5 is I want D Dia the reason I want Dia is because she's an off banner or off field fire which hasn't existed since Shang Lin like I actually want an off field fire right and then with Mika, and then I want to try and get Mika, um, because it's another cryo healer, um, and the game refuses to give me Chi Chi, um, and I don't know which banner I'm gonna pull on for that. I may pull Shin Shinha because um, uh, Twig told me that she's off field cryo. Did you by chance see the uh, highlight, though, of me and Twig pulling for Yang Fei and Scaramouche? That one was very late, but it I still find it hilarious. There's a lot of good moments in that one. My, my favorite part, I told Twig I was going to do this as a separate video, but it ended up fitting into the video itself. But my, my favorite part of that is where I go, what kind of crazy fool would be able to pull back-to-back -back five stars? And then I cut, <laughs> and then I cut to every single time I've pulled back-to-back -back five stars. <laughs> and I'm glad I delayed on that too, because the Ayato Raiden one uh, actually happened after this, because it, it, it was a later banner. <laughs> I still say, though, that during the uh, Child and Miko banners, you had the best reactions. Like, <laughs> just spamming stop in chat. <laughs> All right. What do I uh, what do I need here? Um, probably run that because you got fiery arrow. Anytime I want a four star, I get tons of five stars, but it takes me forever to get the four star. <laughs> Looking at that whole thing, it took Twig 140 pulls to get uh, one Scaramouche. It took me 130 to get Yang Fei. <laughs> and in the process, I C6 the other two. By the way, I'm using Farazun, <laughs> something I never thought I'd ever do. Goro can still burn in uh burn in the purgatory of the character menu, but but I'm actually using Faras and I'm using her on a team with uh Hazo. Okay, what are, what do I want you to run? I didn't realize she had an animo strip, and I have um Hey Akka. 
And I have uh, C6 on her, so it's like, why not, right? But the uh, the C1 Wanderer is just kind of sitting in that character in that character menu purgatory. <laughs> I just like Twig is like, and you're not even gonna fucking use him. <laughs> I'm I'm pretty good. I'm pretty good. Had a good day at work, and then um, and last night I think I managed to solve all my uh all my in all my internet issues. So I'll I'll re go over it again, just just briefly. So last night. I had more connection issues and it caused me to end my Borderlands stream a bit earlier than I wanted to. And yes, it was a five hour stream and I still wanted to go longer. Um, so the thing was, we I finally, my roommate was home, so we finally call the ISP and they're, they're like, oh, well, there's an update here that's just pending. And I'm like, well, you know, I try, I logged into the router and modem and everything. And it's like, she's like, oh no, this is something that should have been done on our end. You know, so she installs it, uh, fixes a couple things. Uh, like I had both, I had the two point four, the two G and the five G networks on the same name and password. She fixed that, so that wouldn't cause confusion anymore. Um, and then is she sending? Are she sending devices over that should help boost the wireless signal? So hopefully that won't drain me uh, on wired. And, um, and then on top of that, I got my name added to the tech support list for the account. So I don't need to wait for my roommate to come home anymore to help me deal with any internet issues. I can just call them myself. So all of that is fantastic news. My internet's been so super stable. I can't even fathom it. I'm actually curious. Let me test something right now while you guys are here as my witnesses. I want to try to see, I think I should be able to do this midstream. I want to try and see if I can go back up to the 65 kilobytes I was running. I want to see, is it going to skyrocket? It's not changing. Oh, I, I don't really need it at 65. I only had it at 65 because um, someone once said that 65 was needed um, for 1080. And then I later realized that no, uh, someone else pointed out, no, 4,500 4, uh, 4, is more than enough. Maybe I'll try it on a future stream. Because I used to run at 6,500, but I couldn't maintain that. Drop the 45... Um, and I maintained that for a while, and now I just started having these issues, but this seems to have fixed everything. But yeah, so, um, but yeah, those, uh, I'm very proud of, of that highlight. Like, after, you know, as I, you know, as the ADHD in me finally sat down and focused on getting it done, but I was really happy with that highlight. I was super happy. Um, I had to make three versions of it, too. First version I did, I realized... What did I... I screwed up on something. The second version I did, I realized that... Um, when I was doing the flashback for, you know, pulling back-to-back -back five stars... I realized that I had accidentally... Um, on the Ayato and Raiden part, on one of those, I accidentally put Albedo instead of Ayato. Oh, no! Yeah, I did that. That was the mistake. And then I all And then I noticed on a previous one I put Albedo instead of Ayato, I think. And then on another one I accidentally spelled Ayato's name wrong. I put I think it or I it was Ayoto I spelled. So I had to fix both of those. Now, don't get me wrong. I really enjoy Wanderer, and his gimmick of hovering is super useful for traveling and event and exploring. And he's fun to play. I just like Hazel more. I just like punching. The punching is so cool. That's why I like D Dia. I really want to put Dia on the same team as him. But the problem is, is my pirate. <laughs> I plan to replace Toma with with her, 
Um, and uh, Toma's on a du on a dual pyro team, so uh, we'll have to see on that one. Hazel's so fun. I love him. I love his combat style. He he is so fun. He he kicked out Seiyu. <laughs> I love Seiyu. Seiyu is fantastic. <laughs> but Seiyu can't punch people. <laughs> Do you know how satisfying it is to see, like, one of those giant hilly churls? I forget what they're called. And you just, like, straight up just, like, throw your fully charged uh, skill and you KO them. And, like, just the motion. Like, like the whoosh, Right? Like. <laughs> I want to, I want to, I want to, like, meet the voice actor for Hazo. Just get him to uh, record a line similar to Falcon Punch, but more like Hazo, Hazo, uh, uh, form like Hazo specific, and then just do a montage, a clip montage of running around punching things, and just inserting him saying that. <laughs> Hazo Punch or Detective Punch, whatever it would be. Um, I, I, I'm sitting on menus too much here. I'm 40 minutes into the stream. Uh, I don't know what to give her. <laughs> uh, I guess let's go. I'm kind of scared. Let's go Sage's ring. And then I'm going to give you. Yeah, I'd have to get like I I I'd have to like meet his vo who voices Hazo anyways. I'll look it up quickly. Hazo is voiced by an English Heron Reg Regan. I would literally pay him 10 bucks just to say a line like that. And the thing is, like, I don't even know, like, I might do, I might do two versions. I might do the meme version. So it'd just be like a six minute, like a six second video, right? Like a vine, if you will. And it just goes, and he just goes, here's a punch, right? Or, or whatever it is. And, and then that's the video. And then I would do a montage version. He has his email on his website. I could actually email him. And uh, actually ask him and be like, hey, you know, dude, could I could I ask you for this? Hey, Saudi, uh, I'll even I'll even pay you like I'll pay you 10 bucks just to give me this audio clip. <laughs> I'll PayPal it to you. I don't care, but it would be it would be so worth it. All right, what do I, I think I want immunity to silence. I don't know if it's going to help at all for this, but let's run that. Uh, I do not want dragon shield. Oh, no, I do want dragon shield. What am I talking about? Bond can't equip anything. Oh, absolutely. You just learned of that today? Dear God. 
What rock have you been living under? Because I want to join you. That was not something I ever needed to hear about. Like, that's, like, it's so scummy. But this is what I like. Like, people were talking about how something similar like this... Oh, okay. I guess that's fair. Uh, people were talking about how something similar to this happened... Or similar things happened with, uh, eight, with HI3. And in the two cases... I think one was Chinese and one was Japanese... In the Chinese case, it was a guy that was basically, like, cheating on his wife and... Oh, absolutely. That was great. He was, like, cheating on his wife and all this stuff. So they basically just fired him and they replaced him. Like, full-on redid the voice work, everything. Um, and then the J Japanese thing, it wasn't anything bad, but it was a girl that... It was the girl that voiced, like, the main character... One of the main characters. I think it was Mei. And, um... She was basically just simply unvoiced for a year. Because I think, like, the voice actress got hurt or something and couldn't couldn't record any lines. So in the Japanese version, they just left her unvoiced until the voice actor could come in and voice all the lines. P apparently they called it the Year of Silence. <laughs> Which is kind of clever. Um... But, but yeah, like, especially when you consider how much money Genshin makes, like, it's probably pennies, pennies for them to replace him anyway. So, um, yeah, he, uh, he is not a great guy. But, like, you'd never see that in an American game. If someone did, like, that in, like, an, um... It, the, uh, an American game, they'd replace him. But I doubt they'd re-record anything, because they wouldn't want to pay the new guy anything more. they just leave in the old lines. Guild Wars 2 did that, but the previous people didn't leave for bad reasons. I think they just they just uh, decided to to not continue their work and uh, change character or and uh, left, and other people picked up the slack. I think it was uh, one of them was like the male. Uh, Char protagonist, I think, was one of them. Alright, touch the device. Let's go, double boss fight! So the whole reason I even stopped here was because this was coming up and I had connection issues last Final Fantasy so XII this stream. Is the sun Christ. And I didn't want it to skip on this. Not that it really matters. King Raithwal stood here. With this sword, he cut the sun Christ and took its power in his hand. I still don't understand the lore in this. But you're going to use the sword to destroy the So Sun the Christ. Sword of Kings can destroy the Sun Chris. Aren't you, Ash? But it was used Don't previously me, to Bob. create shards that basically could serve almost as nukes. But she was given a new weapon that can now do that same thing. And I'm all confused as to how the how the sword in her left hand could previously do what the sword in her right hand can do. But now it, um, but now it destroys it. 
I'm so confused. I doubt I'm the only confused one. Because, Chloe, if, Chloe you're, you're sitting here watching this and you've probably never even seen this game. <laughs> Have you played it? Have, do you know anything about Final Fantasy XII? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so you're even less confused than me, especially since this is like the end game. <laughs> you would have me destroy the empire? Is this my duty? Is this what you want? I cannot. Why do you hesitate? Take what is yours. The Chris is a blade. It was meant for you. Wield it. Avenge your father. <sighs> Yes, it was I who wore Bashi's face, who cut down the life of Delmasca. Lady Ash, your father's murderer is here. You and Rex! I slew your king. I slew your country. Do these deeds not demand vengeance? <laughs> yes, good. Find your wrath. Take up your sword. Fight and serve those who die before you. <clears throat> A judge magister there was. Two years passed. He took in his hand the midlight shard stolen from Nabratia and used it not knowing what he did. And Nabudis was blown away. Sid ordered this of him to learn the Nethosite's true power. That man swore never to let such terrible power be used again. He forsook his Judas's plate and his name. Judge Zekt. The so Reddit says Judge Zekt, which is why Balthier was uh, a little bit hesitant of him. Basically, he was told to get one of the three shards of Nethesite. These little crystal shards about that fit, fit like the size of a baseball. And, uh, but they have the power to literally basically nuke an entire area in heavy condensed magic. And he was basically told to use it in the middle of a kingdom during a war. And he destroyed the city. And, it, and just like, kind of like how nuclear uh, radiation exists, this, like the city, like you can go to where the area was and it's just like destroyed, deserted, and filled with monsters. He literally, like, just destroyed everything. <sighs> you see later in the game, you see at one point in the game when, um, on the Leviathan, uh, what judge was it? There was a judge that tried to do the same thing. He tested it in his ship, and, uh, it, it burned so much power it basically nuked the entire or uh, the entire air fleet. Rassler, my prince, our time was short. Yet I know this: you are not the kind to take base revenge. <sighs> the Rassler I knew is gone. Sorry if you hear clinking. I'm getting my mugs you ready because I have hot chocolate cooking. You must use the Nethersite. You must be the one to straighten the history. This is one of the few games I really like, you know, upon rewatching it. That the, uh, basically the, the orchestrator behind the villain's motives actually doesn't have villainous intentions. So the villain is a being known as Vina. He's one of the Orkoria, basically one of the major gods of the world. And it's basically like he's like the Orkoria basically play with the humans and choose who gets power, who doesn't, how history goes. And this and Vina's just like, well, I I think the humans should have a right to govern themselves and choose for themselves and do what they want. And so basically fled the Akuria and latched onto a couple of humans, the antagonists of the game, 
and basically we're just like, let's, uh, I I'm just gonna give you the means to basically take the reins of history into man's hands. I can't help my brother now. My brother's gone. He's dead. Even with power, we cannot change what is past. What is done, is done. Yet without power, what future can you claim? What good a kingdom you cannot defend? Yeah. I do plan to play 7, the remake, at some point. After I finish this, I plan to do the Golden Sun franchise. You, you who failed Landis and the Masker, what can shame hope to keep safe? Your shield is shattered. I plan to play all three Golden Sun games after this. Uh, after uh, Dungeons of uh, Nahulik, I plan and oh, he's almost done. Uh, I plan to beat. Um, uh, I plan to do Need for Speed Most Wanted on GameCube, and after after Borderlands uh, Three, I plan to do Pokemon, Pokemon Platinum, trying a random lock concept. I just want to check something with Ash here. I didn't actually remember if I checked this or not. Okay, we're good. Dead. So you, too, would leave your debts unpaid. Enough of this! I can bear no more. You disappoint me, Gabranth. What? He trusted you. When you bared steel against the princess, you forswore your obligations to your emperor. You shame yourself and make mockery of Lord Lars's trust. You are unfit to serve him a sword or shield, and so I release you from that service. Your presence is neither required nor welcome. This is Sid, one of the major antagonists, and father to one of the party members, Balthier. The cool guy, the leading man. He's not the leading main character, that's Vaughn, but he's the leading man because he says so. You are only a tool of this Venar. That's Benar, or Balthier. How quaint. We are allies. Because anytime but something's gonna happen to <laughs> like he's like, Bon, I'm gonna teach you how to fly to fly my ship. How Why? Well, he's like, well, I'm the leading man. Power. Might have to do something heroic. By turning your back on their stones, <laughs> you give us free hand to write our own history. And at what Dude, that's the gnaw behind him. Freedom for your I shall not suffer you to have it. The sun crispy damned. <laughs> Be sure that it is. For what other purpose do you think you brought us here? But, my lady, I would have you stay your Acurian sword. The sun crystal is glutted with mist, and so precious a thing must not be squandered. Let us use the stone! Finish this for now! Cocoon of the sun crest. Spill forth your mist upon this evil east. Let's see in sky be a wash in it that Bahamut may come and drink his fill. Triumph! 
Oh, he's gonna summon an Esper. The fruit of our power and knowledge. See what the stone of man is capable of. Witness and that's why I set everyone to doing fire to damage. This is the water esper. Representing the zodiac sign Aquarius. And the only time you see anyone other than the protagonist summon one. You have to take him out before you can fight Sid again. Uh, we have, uh... Okay, uh, I gotta go into gambits here for a sec, because good old- My good old boy Redis here is using Holy when I don't want him to use- to drain his magic. Um, I need to get you to be a wonderful chap and dispel, uh, Fanfret, please. Thank you. Water jaw. I forget what the side effect of this is. Silence. Well, that was a good, uh, good move on my part. And that's ten out of twelve espers. No one have a gambit set to... I have two mages on my team. And no one has a gambit set to cure silence. What am I doing? Do you have a free slot, Vaughn? You, my good sir, can get those echo herbs out. And I can turn your uh, your magic gambit back on, just so you can holy a little bit longer, because you're you're gonna die now. And I don't mean Sid. Sid will die, story wise. Yes, he will die, but so will Redis. It's a darkening cloud. Let him by, Fena. It is done. Ah, uh, how I have enjoyed these six years. The pleasure was all mine. and no other way. Huh. Spend your pity elsewhere. If you are so set on running, hadn't you best be off, fool of a pirate? I kind of like that his end there because he shows that he does despite all his craziness he does still care about Valthier. The mist burns to bursting it beats the cocoon <sighs> the sun crest bursts just run as far as you can. Easy, friend. Hadn't you best be off? 
That's what a sky pirate does. You fly, don't you? <laughs> I suppose you'd better hang on then. Ash, the sword! We had to stop it! <sighs> Voices right. For Nabodis. Redis. Oh, it is. It's. Why did I not think it was Phil Lamar? Redis, no. I, Judge Magister, condemn you to oblivion. Of course, that's like Phil Lamar's iconic voice. Like, how did I not know that was Phil Lamar? I managed to pick up John DiMaggio. God, the Futurama fan in me is just dying here when I don't realize this crap. I wonder if he voices anyone else, because John DiMaggio voices two characters. He voices Miguelo and he voices... Um... Gilgamesh. You can check, he's on the Final Fantasy wiki. Uh, Gijuk. Brothers. That's one of, uh, Bakgaman's henchmen. Who voices Bakgaman? What's about that? I swear to God, if it's like Billy West, I'm gonna f fucking lose it. Voice that oh Steve Blum okay well that makes sense. I am very familiar with Steve Blum because he's uh he's Ritlock from uh from Guild Wars uh two. I would love love like obviously we're not we're not at the end of the game. We're we're entering final game. Like, I can literally go after the final boss after this. But I want to do what I didn't do in the previous playthrough of this game. Um, and what I didn't do was get all the espers and fight all the bosses and do all the hunts. I didn't do it because things were kicking me in the teeth. Well, I fixed that issue. I got two more espers to get. I got s several more hunts to do. Al Cid? We let ourselves inside. The situation is one demanding some haste, you understand? And, um... How did you know where we were? There's a couple optional bosses I want to give a go at. Hellworm and Omega Mark. I showed Omega boss, Mark earlier. I have actually... I don't even think I've referenced Hellworm. If I have, maybe once. My lady, I can actually fight it now, because it's a level 60 boss, but... Then you were unsuccessful in stopping the Rosarian fleet? I used a variety of methods, all went according to plan, until it came time to request withdrawal of our most devoted generals. In their enthusiasm for war, our great military leaders went behind my back straight to Marquis Sandor's resistance. The resistance? During training, a division of the resistance ignored their orders and disappeared. They were next found exchanging broadsides with the Imperials over old Nabradia. Why would they go there? They were asking to be found. You misunderstand. Those ships must surely belong to Rosarian Division. They may have joined Ondor's resistance forces as patriots or even mercenaries, but in reality they are regulars of the Rosarian army under direct command of our war pavilion. These fifth column has invaded Imperial airspace and provoked a response. Unable to abandon them, His Excellency the Marquis was obliged to give his main fleet the order to attack. And the battleground is the Lamasca. Should this fight drag on, Rosaria will enter the fray. 
The defense of Dalmasca is their excuse, and we will have a war between empires. Correct. They will buy their time hmm. waiting to strike until the Empire has spent itself against the Marquis. But then he will crush them and the Marquis both between his hands. Vane holds the Dusk Shard no longer. His advantage is lost. Vane has advantages enough. He stands on higher grounds, and my birds tell me he has awoken something quite large. Bahamut, Lord of the Sky. There was a stirring in the mist. I feel like that's one thing I don't like about Final Fantasy XII, is a lot of these legendary creatures in the Final Fantasy lore and uh, like multiverse are merely ships and vehicles in this game it breathed life into this bahamut bahamut leviathan tiamat they're all just well no tiamat's actually a monster all went according to dr sid's designs yes the man's last great accomplishment i fear and so it falls to me to put an end to the thing Vane commands Bahamut himself. He comes to Rabanasta. Then I will defend Elmaska and stop this Bahamut. This is my charge. That's our charge, actually. It's our home. It belongs to us all. And my charge is to hinder and delay this Rosarian invasion for as long as is possible. I will do what I can. Ah, yes. When this unpleasantness is done, you must come to Rosaria. I will take you to the Amber Vale of Clan Margrace. Such things I will show you. Until then, I will be waiting. <laughs> All right, we are now in, like I said, the final stretch. So I just want to re-equip things that I had equipped it previously. I'm still trying to run the tippet here just to try and level up everyone as fast as possible. Oh, and uh, I do have to do the next phase of the plan too, which is... Uh Which is rolling for the next Esper. As mentioned, I very, very much want it to be Vaughn. Let's pop open the menu for the rolling. Open in a new window. All right. So, as stated before, this is, this is going to be the third last time we'll see this. Um, uh, I will roll one to six. One is Vaughn, two Balthier, three Fran, four Bosch, five Ash, and six is Pinello. I will stay so far with the previous three espers, or three, previous nine espers. I have not once had an esper land on anyone that can actually successfully and graciously benefit from its use. So, yeah. I'm going to roll this. I literally have a 1 in 6. And it will not happen. 3, 2, 1, 4. And it goes to Bosch. Because the, because the world is cruel as hell. Let me update that. Bosch. Er, uh... What's his name? Fan. God damn it. 
Well, I have one Hastiga user. What does Bosch even get out of this? Where is he? Okay. Oh, he gets two battle lores he already owned. Well, that's fantastic. What does he get on this license board? Oh, there's Fanfrit. Oh, hey, look, a magic lore that he already had. Yeehaw! All right, let me uh, let me graciously look up what all the other classes could have got. I already know I wanted Mechanus because that got me that got me. Um... And for it, um, because that got me access to a second Hastiga. It's just basically the top three time battle ma or time battle mage ma or time magics. Uh, if it went so, Bosch got access to stuff he didn't need. Um, if Ash got or if uh, what's it, Vaughn? So Vaughn, we already knew what he would have gotten from Mechanus. On the night side of things, he would have gotten jack shit. So, um, but it would have more than made up for it. On the Balthier side of things, Monk and Ulan. Potion Lore 3, and White Magic 10, which would have been Arise and Dispelga. Fuck you, game. I would have had a full revive. And another Dispel user that wasn't my Red Battle Mage or my White Mage. Fuck you, game. That would have been a great second second pick. Uh, if Fran got it, Archer would have gotten two HP lores. Um, 390 and 435, which would have been fantastic defensive boosts. And White Mage would have gotten Daggers 5, which is kind of garbage, and Numerology. I don't understand this entire purpose of late game espers unlocking licenses for fucking mid-game weapons. Like, what is this bullshit? Ori, Calcum, Dirk, and Platinum Dagger? Are you kidding me? What good would that be? Fucking garbage by this point in the game. Numerology's not bad, though, but I wouldn't have u I wouldn't use it. It's fractional damage with the mod. It's terrible in the base game. In the base game, that's just like a kick in the nuts. Hey, this is like the third strongest Esper in the game. Oh, and just so you know, you can equip mid-level daggers and a spe and a technique that does damage um, based off of random chance. Yay! Um, Bosch. He got one magic lore and two bat or on full breaker and two battle lores on red battle mage. Um. Ash was Black Mage, which would have gotten HP 190, 230, and 310. And uh, Shikari got nothing. But I think Ash probably already got those from Shikari. Yeah. Yeah. Um. Red battle, or er, and then uh, finally, uh, Bushi gets nothing, and Time Battle Mage would have gotten a battle over it. So, so Va Vaughn was the was the desire, and Balthier was the backup. But that proves that Mechanist Monk is a better combination because with this one Esper, you get Hastiga and Arise all at the all in the same go. And even with uh, monk, even with machine me, um, mechanist having, um, you know, all the phoenix lores, you still don't generally, um, you still only heal like half their HP. Arise is a full res. Wait, I only see one phoenix lore. Does he not get all three? I swear to God, I thought they got all three. Wow, that's kind of disappointing. I 
I guess that's why Archer is considered the best item user. Because our Archer actually gets every single item lic er, license. Anyways, a new hunt has shown up at the bulletin board, and it'll be the last hunt to be gotten from the bulletin board. I think the vendors carry new things now, too, because uh, I just beat Faros. Maybe? No. I could just buy the Great Axe? Oh, fuck you, game. Well, I suppose it's not really the game's fault. The game didn't really tell me whether I could or could not buy anything. Why is my internet... Why are my frames dropping again? I thought I fixed this! I'm dropping 40 frames a second! I thought I fixed this! Are you kidding me? Why do I bother trying anything anymore? I'm so done with this. Is it stable again? Nope. Gave me a sense of false security there for a moment. It's actually fluctuating colors, though, this time, which it never did before. It would just be a block of red. All right, one second. Frame drops are caused by a render frame rate to encoder frame rate mismatch. For example, if you render at 100 FPS and the encoder is only configured to handle 60, it will drop those extra 40 frames every second because the encoder isn't synced to the FPS output. I wonder if that's my issue.
So let me check something here. Uh, set OBS frame rate. To set the high frame rate in OBS, you want to navigate Setio Settings Video. Okay, I have it set to 60. Okay, it restabilized again, by the way, but I'm just, I think I may have actually found my solution. So from what it sounds like, is that something's trying to stream at 100 frames. Though I still think it's my upload, because why would my upload drop to like 3 upload? I can't stream off of that. Yeah, so everything's fixed again, but like, oh man, I, like I fucking panicked. Like I was actually like scared for a second there that I thought like it was like it, it only went for a second, but like I'm still concerned here. Hmm. Let me just check, check. Let me check something here. There's an additional set of settings for this game. But I have to restart the game. One second, I apologize. Hmm. 
Okay, it's all it's all the settings I um I want. VSync is on. I apologize for the deafening sound. I'm gonna try and catch it. Got it. Here's my CPU usage. OBS is using like almost no CPU. As a matter of fact, VTube Studio is the one that's guzzling this CPU right now. Oh well. I don't really know what to do, I just know that it fixed itself, so uh, that's what we're going with. This is, uh, I don't know how much longer this stream's gonna be, I know it's an hour and a half right now, but, um, obviously I do want to get some sleep. I need to get in and do Genshin dailies as well, um... If it's still an issue, like, I'm not going to say anything, like, I'm not going to call up the, um... The ISP and be like, oh, you know, the update didn't fix anything. I'm going to wait until the, uh, the new tech they sent gets here first. Because, um, supposedly that's supposed to help with speed in the, in the house and stuff, so, um... If that can help, then... I thought it was you. No, I don't want to race you. I don't want to race. I thought you were the one that had the hunt. Care. Oh, 
Oh my god. I had to I've never had to race him before. This is a mini game and you get a reward for it. But I've never done it because I don't care to. But I've never had to do it to start the quest. Alright. What is this guy weak to again? This is the last bulletin board hunt. The rest of the hunts are um are all elite marks. Can you stop loading haphazardly Final Fantasy Wiki? Yeah. For this all I'll have left is the Gilgamesh quest, Behemoth King. Uh, as Ishion, Shadow Seer, and he is mocked. This guy is weak to fire. Not that I feel like it particularly matters. But we will run the, f the fire team again. Not that much much of it really changes. Alright, let's go pick this guy. his level. Hey, we got him. Not a hard fight.
right, let's head back to the port. Grand Mace. I now have the, uh, no. I now have the strongest mason, or second strongest mace in the game, but it is the strongest. But it's debatable because it's, it's ground, da it's earth damage and it boosts earth. So it is a very powerful weapon for, uh, Bosch. All right, I'm reading something to do with the mod. We're gonna head to Rabinaster, and we'll, we're gonna go talk to Mont Blanc to see if he has any things open.
I'll read more of this later. It's just uh, some reviews on the on the mod itself. Very in-depth ones, paragraphs long. This one's actually really easy to do. And it gets you, in my opinion, what is what is effectively the best... Um, crossbow bolt in the game. Kind of getting distracted by my own idle thoughts here. Head here. You know what I might just do? Um, because I've played this game already, and because I would like to end it and move on, um, I may just use an experience cheat. Just to bump my guys to 99. It's not going to make the, a huge difference, mind you. Like, it's mostly going to be, like, a strength difference. Making double checking my math here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. I'm missing one. There's three on Fran, yeah. There's three on Balthier. So Balthier is the one I'm missing. So he has the lightning esper, the poison esper. What's the other one he has? The blue one. Oh. Zero mus. I forgot to add in zero mus. Descriptions for this stuff is going to be very, very out of whack. Oh, 
But before I get to any of these hunts, guess what I can go and do? It's going to be very fun. Who's the guy I need to talk to for 10 espers? There we go. I think he's the guy I had to talk to. So I entered this area in my last playthrough, and I got in and out, and I game over like seven times. Everything is strong here. That is the strongest light light armor head piece. Well, it's not the strongest, I think, with the mod anymore, but it is uh, a powerful one, to be sure. Uh, it provides the highest HP bonus of any um, anything in the game. I'm gonna load up this area. Not only because it'll tell me like where the map is, but like. This is the most Eastern section of phase two dig. I'm mostly loading it to have access to the hidden map parts. There it is. Like, this will show me the non-hidden parts, but... 
right? But like there's hidden parts. That is, I think, I, if I recall correctly, is that not the strongest gun in the game? Or no, I think they changed it. Let me check on licenses here. Yeah, it's not. It's the second strongest gun. I'll take it, though, still. I'm not going to turn down a free gift like that. Oh, God. Those golden needles... Yeah, like, I think I made it decently okay getting in. There was a point where I couldn't go further. Like, because I can kind of handle these guys almost one at a time-ish. But, like, in that, in that, um, under the full mod, like, I could not make it far. And that is a potentially broken trinket. It depends on how you run the character. So that trinket, that accessory, reverses the effects of what items do to the target. So if I use a potion, it will do damage. If I use... Um, if I use a remedy, it will inflict every stat condition it can based on the, um, based on the, um, based on the amount of remedy licenses you have. Phoenix Downs will basically insta-kill. The Colette, that's the strongest mage hat in the game. Goddess Majesty, I believe that's the second strongest robe in the game, right? Oh no! Oh, right, 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 right. So you can, like, so the game actually gives you the, um, so what the mod does is the mod actually put a lot of the temporary stuff back in the game. So this is the Dusk Shard. It's just not called Dusk Shard because it was never actually called Dusk Shard. It was removed from your inventory by the time it was realized what it was. I might actually try to fight Zodiac here. I have no idea what my odds will be, but... I think I'm gonna run Ash. Um... Fran. And... God Hand! Yes! That is the strongest knuckle in the game. 
by leaps and bounds. So the rocket punch is the second strongest normal gauntlet because the next two are Kaiser and magic hands. Kaiser's damage formula is that akin to guns, meaning it ignores your, your strength and enemy defense and it just does a flat damage. While magic hands is, ba is based off the mage formula. So it requires high magic to use. This one is literally rocket punch, but just like 30, 30 attack power better. This literally now breaks Bosch. There's the Dawn Shard. to switch weapons. I think this is a this is sort of about as far as I made it. I remember I made it to here. But I got the crap beaten out of me so badly. I can't actually enter that because that's the exit to the boss arena. Because the thing is, to do a lot of the late game stuff, like make attempts, like I pretty much would just be pushing to get to 100. They managed to hit me with with uh, disease before I could get bubble back up. Are you fucking kidding me? Come on, come on. Oh my god, go away. Go away.
I think I'm just gonna like I'm just gonna speed things up here. I'm just gonna level everyone to 99. I'm telling you right now it will not make a a heap of a difference. It'll buff their strength and magic based on and like it basically will buff their their stat values a little bit, but like it won't like what's what's the mod say? The mod folder. What is it? Character, Esper, and Character Guide. So this guy, you know, he did make a thing where he updates. Oh no, I don't think it... I don't know if he included, like, their stats. Either way. Hopefully this one should work. Sync it to the game. Experience. All right. I'm adding in a small LP modifier too, just to finish, just so I can get Bosch and Fran done as well. Right, that's all I'm turning on is those two cheats. I don't know if it's going to max them out like right off the bat, but we're going to find out. Yep. I just did like five times like 5,000 HP. He stop casting buffs, please. Thank you. But like, let me check statuses here. Like, did that actually change much? Yeah. So like, Bosch's strength is capped now, and their magics obviously went up and stuff. So like, in a way, I guess it did kind of break things, but not too much compared to like the bosses I still have left. Another one of those boots. I'm not exactly thrilled with going in there just yet. There we go. There we go. Everyone is now 99. And that should have gotten me... Oh, that's a rare game. And that was just a regular rare game because you didn't drop a trophy. A 
career necrophobe, the romance of a soul that with unusually strong attachment to this world. What makes him spawn? Oh, so when I kill a heck, uh, Hectaes, there's a 10% chance one will spawn in six different locations. than enough. I can turn these off now. I'll leave it open. I may end up using it to, to force spawn some chests and stuff. Just to eliminate a little bit of a gear grind. everyone. Yeah, that's everything on everyone. So now I can kind of just run who I want. No, honestly, like, outside of magic defense, like, I see almost no reason to even upgrade these guys, like, like, I can just go to a gold skull cap that is literally, like, the same magic power, but, like, with her, gold skull cap actually doesn't cap magic, but circlet does, and it gives her a huge magic boost. I kind of just want to work towards wrapping everything up. So that's why I decided to push everyone to 99. Has anyone attacked yet?
Probably not, because Vaughn's probably going to be too busy fucking stealing from them. because they're undead. You got safety. You need to fractional damage. By the way, with Bubble, you can't actually see my max HP anymore. In the original PS2 version, 999 was the health cap. In this game, it's actually higher than that. They just don't visibly display it. are going to respawn. And that is why I switched to Fran. Like, let me let me pause for a second. Let me look at my schedule. For this game. Uh for this week, I mean. My next Final Fantasy stream is on Saturday. And it's a day it's one it's a day off. So if I can just get a little bit done tonight, a little bit more done, like maybe 
I'll fight Zodiac and then call it after that. Then I will, um... Try to do everything else on the remaining stream. I may even start it at 12 instead of 1. And then the following week I can begin Golden Sun. Zodiac Spear! That's the strongest spear in the game. Shogo is found in Pharos. In the Subterra. have a black mask. I, like, I did not make it this far. I turned back way before I got here on my, um... Like, way before I got to anywhere near this point. I couldn't make it... I could barely make it past the heck ties. There's Renew! So that's just a full heal.
Brave suit. So that by no means is super strong, but, but, oh, ho, 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 ho. Isn't that interesting? Though Balthier can equip the Brave Suit without a drop in strength. Which means that this is actually worthwhile equipping. I lose three defense, but I gain permanent bravery. Oh, I can I can get rid of everyone's um This is definitely not going to be optimal an optimal fight for sure. At this point, it doesn't even matter because all my mage characters are maxed. So, this will lower my strength to 90. Doesn't even touch my magic power, but gives me half resistance to every element in the game. If I equip the Grand Helmet, it gets me everything back. What about like the 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 Mage Helmet, like the Mage Shock E or whatever it's called? That is eleven strength. So yes, that would work. Um, does it come in?
Found the Lusu Mines. And that would actually be a better helmet for Bosch anyways, being the... The impromptu red mage. You know, if he needs to use a little bit of, like, healing magic, he has it. Now, like, Pinello needs it anyways. Bran actually has pretty decent strength for someone that, um... Besides, this is good anyways, because I can bring him, him into the Zodiac fight, as he'll have half dark. I can bring in Vaughn, who I can switch to the, the Demon Shield. And then I can have you, but you'll probably need to run the Black Mask. And switch to a non elemental. And with you, I'm going to switch you to this one. That is a mod change, though. In the base game, it's just the strongest set of robes in the game. So he made it so it's not as strong in some aspects of the other pieces of equipment, but it does provide... Um, it does provide um, half resistance to every single element. So literally only non-elemental stuff will actually do anything. will actually be able to break through anything. Oh wow, that was not intended. I found a grand armor. Am I out of X potions again? Well, that's going to be a fun fight. I could equip this on Fran. Get a huge boost to strength, ma magic. Like, basically, I lose three magic resistance. And beyond that, I lose literally nothing else. On a mage. So that just strengthens bow. It's literally. And gives her better defenses. None of my other guys need it, so, uh. You know, why the hell not?
Ribbon. So that is one of the best accessories in the game. It makes you immune to every single status effect. This was the team that I'm going to run. If I drop the black mask, and I'll probably keep the black mask on permanently, dropping it um, increases my resistance by five, but I lose four magic power. And that's not worth it to me. I'm just trying to, I'm looking at this, and I want one of them to have the ribbon. Who has more space for, like, licenses and stuff? Technically, you do. What is it? What can Zodiac cast again? So it's sleep, disable, break. Sleep, disable, and break. I think it's best if I give it to Vaughn then. Now it's level 2 sleep, level 3 disable, and level 4 break. So the sleep and, and break will not work at all. It's literally just the disable I have to worry about. You can also inflict disease on attack, so I should probably run serum too. Bubble should make me immune to it, but you just never know. I'm bl I literally just blanked on what I wanted to do. I'm actually going to have Fran attack instead.
Oh yeah, I was gonna have him do eye drops. Now the cool thing that I I love, once again about the uh, remake, auto saves. If I die on Zodiac, I literally just have to reload the auto save. In the PS2 version, if you died on Zodiac, you are coming all the way back from that lonesome little save crystal. Fun times all around. Bone also has permanent float and, uh... Oh, ba or Bosch hitter. I don't have any remedies either. Well, fuck. Zero remedies. That's the only way to cure disable. Outside of Asuna. Which means that I have to give the ribbon to Fran instead. Which means she's just gonna guzzle MP. But if that's how it has to be, that's how it has to be. Yeah, Bosch got confused. He struck Fran and he hit her with this with the Berserk immobilized uh, statuses. This is it. That's the door. So this is what I'm gonna do, and this is what every guide you'll ever read suggests. You walk in with one person and give them the black mask. The reason being is because Zodiac loves spamming Dark Cha. Like the others use their jaw moves, but he spams the ever-loving hell out of it. It is literally the first attack he does in the fight, which is why you want to end in with one party member. The problem is, is Dark Cha um, can inflict blind, but it can also straight up insta-kill, and you don't want half your party wiping. And the insta-kill effect and blind can bypass the absorb of dark, of the black mask, as they are separate factors. Um, so even being immune to dark just damage is not going to mitigate um, what this does. I'm not running any elemental effects because he can change his element on a whim. Is dark job. Yeah. 
Oh wow, we're doing super well. Oh my god. He's, immu he's immune to damage now. Arctra. So Vaughn and Bosch will take half damage. So like this is literally the end of this guy's fight is literally an endurance match. Because of his his constant palings. Oh he can inflict doom now. Interesting. He's dead. Got him. That went smoother than I thought. I might actually go for Ultima next if it was gonna go that easy. That's the hardest Esper in the game. Considering how fast I was able to chunk down his HP, that was insane. Alright, who gets Zodiac? Alright, same as before. One is Vaughn, six is Pinello. It is three. It is Fran. Fran sort of benefits from it. Not a whole lot. So Fran gets Thousand Needles, which is useless, and Shades of White, which is also useless. Great. Shades of White, I can cast any white magic buff. If only I wasn't a white mage. <laughs> Alright, let me add Fran in on the uh, edit here. Fran. Go TR. Uh, and of course let us uh let us inspect to see yeah so I'll, I'll just get all the espers this one so i just got ultima left i'll run through gear of Vagan. and then that literally crosses gear of Vagan off the map too i have nothing left in gear of Vagan, which is gonna be a bless well i i technically have omega mark and i could fight omega mark now too like there's nothing stopping me i just have to beat pharos so i could give him a go And then the finale on Saturday will be uh, fighting, all, doing all the hunts, and then uh, beating the game. Pretty much it. For, for um, Omega Mark, I have a plan, and it will be invo it'll involve Vaughn. I plan to use this one for permanent lure, um, because uh, Omega Mark can only t I believe he can only single target out our enemy or individuals.
I don't believe he has any elements. Like, literally, guides would recommend you not even equip the helmet. Because um, lure and reverse wouldn't always guarantee cast. I don't even think he uses magic. So what does Zodiac give? So we already went over Archer. Uh, and I didn't look at White Mage. White Mage gets... Um, should probably go buy that. Oh, I already had it. Oh, no. Sorry, it's somewhere else. This one. I'm going to equip the Claymore. Yay. I can I beat the strongest Esper in the game to be able to equip the weakest Greatsword. Um, Vaughn as Mechanist and, and Knight. Knight got nothing. Mechanist got 390 HP, which probably doesn't even matter because I think... Um, Knight would have... Knight got that. Yeah. Um, Monk got Renew, and Oolong gets nothing. Uh, Red Battle Mage gets, uh, Greatsword 4, which is Ragnarok. Um, I think that's Chance to Immobilize, and... Or no, I think that got stripped. I think it's just Permanent Haste with the mod. And then uh, Foe Breaker gets nothing. Bushi gets Heavy Armor 9, 10, and 11, which is pointless because uh, I'm Time Battle Mage. And Time Battle Mage got Swords 9, which is Dorindal and Simha, which are two of the strongest swords in the game. Uh, so that actually wouldn't have been that bad because I believe that's a, a Holy Sword and a Water Sword. Um, I swear to God, though, if... Archer gets Ultima, I'm going to be pissed. Is there a chest in, in this guy's room at all or anything? No? Alright, time to head out. Yeah, that went way smoother than I was expecting it to. I feel like, I don't know if, you know what? I don't know if this, if I can really, I was saying is like, I feel like they nerf these fights, but I feel like, like just in the remake, but I think they actually didn't. I think just in general, what ended up happening, um, Um, I think what ended up happening was they removed the damage cap, which was 9,999. And I feel like because they removed that, your character effectively hits harder. You know, provided you can hit those numbers. Like, I think I'm... I'm like, let me remove the... Yeah, I'm hitting 44,000 damage on those things. That's a guaranteed kill. Like, that's not even a joke. So I feel like being able to hit beyond damage cap is, is probably the best thing. Alright, I'm pretty sure I got all the items here too. Let's get out of here and head to Garavagan. Actually, no, 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 not yet. I'm 
are going to be dumb for like the third time this playthrough. I need to restock on potions and I need to restock on remedies. The fact that I even got through that was a miracle. It's the same with... The, th the first time, by the way, was when I went through the Great Crystal without any potions. I don't know how I lived. See how well we are gonna see higher uh, higher numbers soon. I don't even know where some of these are from. Arctic wind. Yeah, there's here's all a lot of the Pharos items. The money climb nowhere near done. I'm still not even at a Pharos yet. To give you an idea here. And okay, now we're getting out of Pharos. Dark energy is a powerful item. Got the the mage helmet. Dark energy does 50,000 damage to the target. And I think you only get like one or two of them in an entire playthrough. If I have time, I might go do uh, Hellworm too, depending on how long this this takes. Because I do still need to do Genshin dailies.
right, so bad news is I, I still have to run through the entirety of Garu Vegan. Good news is, and I'm is I'm strong enough that most of these things aren't really going to be much of a bother. Just to make this easier. I'm immune to all statuses and they're going to do so minimal damage to me. Reopening the Great Crystal Map because while I don't necessarily need it because I know I can just basically go straight to Ultima, I do I I will technically need it to get the Omega Mark. I also see no need to um, do all the tro hunting trophies because I technically did that last stream. Are you serious? Leave me alone. Okay, so um, I need to ensure that everyone has a means of doing something. Um, I'm going to change this one to a race. Just so no matter what, there's nothing she can do to stop me. What 
this so with this holy jaw inflict again inflicts reverse so that'll that will have to be taken care of Sadly, I don't have the white mask, so I can't block. A, I can't block the. Um, the holy damage. I just realized, though, that I can go back to giving Vaughn the ribbon. You know what? I think I'm going to keep it on Fran. I'm just going to do this too. Remember, I need item licenses because um, because so Ultima's gimmick is that um, when she does or she always has a permanent of battle effect. So either you can't attack, you can't... Um, uh, you can't attack, you can't... Um, you know, use techniques, can't use items. So I, I gotta make sure I'm keeping up various means of, of something. Just in case. HP less than 50%. Just in case. That way he can he can bounce between. Vaughn needs enough uh, a gambit for techniques. I, as you know, provided I can't use attack, right? So. I'm thinking Gil Toss will work fine. Could be good. Everyone has a means of attacking um, when they can't attack. Say it again. 
And then they, um, outside of Vaughn and Fran, they all have a means of healing without... Yeah, Bosch has the means of healing without... Came from that direction. Which one did it? Came from there. Look at the map again. So it's gonna be this one right here. So this one should theoretically be easier. An easier fight. Introducing Ultima. <sighs> Holy Jaw already, wow. By the way, in the base game, the Sage Ring has wholly absorbed. The mod removed that. So we're currently on a MP Drain right now. As the, uh, as the battle effect. She's not long for this world, though. I forgot to, um... Give Bosch... Um... So this one's gonna sting on Vaughn. Because magic's unavailable right now. She's almost dead, come on. Okay, so it's techniques now. Got her. And that is the final Esper of Final Fantasy XII. Eleven of the twelve classes get something from Ultima. Interestingly enough, for the Holy Esper, it is only White Mage that does not get something from Ultima. I think switching to the Gunblade was a good decision on that one.
Okay. So that's huge. So I just got the strongest, the best shield in the game. So this one provides no evasion. But just like the godly, the godly robe or the lordy robes, it halves all elemental damage. Now the big problem here is the only characters that can equip the shield are Ash, who's not in the lineup right now, Bosch, who is not using a one-handed weapon, and Vaughn, who is going to be using permanent lure for this fight. This is the only fight though that I pretty much intend to run this for, unless I have difficulties with others, but. Anyway, let's let's get to rolling the final Esper of this playthrough. All right. So before, I'm going to actually go through everything before this time. So Archer gets Infuse and Thousand Needles. It is literally, it literally unlocks the same two licenses that Zodiac unlocked. So it'd be a complete waste on Archer. And as I mentioned, White Mage gets nothing. So Fran benefits from zero on this. Ash, Black Mage, and Shikari. Shikari gets two Phoenix Lores, which is which is not bad, all things considered, considering Black Mage doesn't get any Phoenix Lores. Uh, Black Mage gets Telekinesis, which is technically useless because Shikari gets it by default, so Black Mage already has that unlocked. Um, Bosch, Foebreaker, Red Battle Mage. Foebreaker gets a Swiftness License, which doesn't hurt because I think Red Battle Mage only gets one. And Foebreaker's Swiftness Licenses are all locked behind it individual espers it's actually terrible um uh, red battle mage gets great swords one and two so i get to equip the three weakest great swords in the game yay suppose it's not too bad like claymore's garbage period but at least defender and save the queen are permanent protect and shell if i wanted to um Sorry. And then I got Excalibur there too, so that's a holy weapon. I think that's permanent regen, if I recall correctly. Uh, weapons. Great swords. It is haste. Yeah, Ragnarok is regen. Ultima is bubble. Yeah. And Claymore is just garbage. Because it gives nothing. Um. So Knight gets Telekinesis and Battle Lore, which wouldn't really necessarily be bad. Because he doesn't have telekinesis, but I can just switch to a gun. So, um, mechanist gets three magic lords, which really don't matter much. Um, monk and ulan get expose and two swiftness licenses. Uh, expose, I don't really necessarily care for, though I'm sure it has use. Swiftness um, is useless because, so the way monk monk's two swiftness licenses, it's stages three or two and three are side by side so if you just uh combine with another class that at least has two swiftness licenses you're guaranteed to get the third without the need of ultima so it's actually useless on monk uh, because ulan has two uh and then bushi and time battle mage i get stamp and I get swords seven and eight, which is Diamond Sword, Runeblade, Deathbringer, and Stoneblade, which are basically garbage weapons. So really, no one benefits from this. Maybe like Ash is Phoenix. Ash getting two Phoenix Lords, I guess, is fine because she technically does use potions because she doesn't have a healing spell. Um. Yeah, I think besides that, like, Monk doesn't benefit from this at all. I thought it did. It doesn't, apparently. Yeah, so maybe Phob... So maybe Bosch or Ash. So what, I'm, I'm looking for four or five on this one? Alright, well, take the roll. One on for the final Esper of the playthrough, and the last... Thing I will be randomizing for this entire playthrough. Three, two, one. 
five. I actually got a character I wanted on something that was basically garbage in the first place. Wow. This is probably the best the best pick out of everything, not gonna lie. Out of all the options I had, that was easily the best pick. So I got two Phoenix licenses, so Phoenix Downs will actually restore more now. Which is, you know, good. Considering she does use Phoenix Downs. Right? Alright. Let me close this. Now I put it in and I said final. Because there's nothing left to randomize in this playthrough. Alright. So let's get back into the game here. Alright. So based on where I am... I want to go south. Just use the waystone, just use the waystone, just use the waystone! I'm not playing this stupid, just touch the fucking waystone. This way. This way. I'm gonna go straight. Not gonna lie, I'm getting to the point in the playthrough where I've only ever fought in these, like. Om so basically, Omega Mark. Um, Shadow Seer, Yizmat, Behemoth King, and um, they are all things. Just activate the stupid waystone. God. They are all expert, or they are all things. They are all bosses I've only ever fought once. And in that once, I cheated. I'll be honest. I've never actually fought Omega Mark legit. And I'm doing it without reverse, too, so that kind of terrifies me, because every strategy under the sun for this guy is about reverse. What? Why can't he be fought? What? Look, I'm not coming back here if I can't fight him. Why can't I fight him?
Oh, it is unavailable to fight. Or it is available to fight once the hunt for Yizmat has been accepted. Which is the other super boss. I didn't realize that. Oh, well, we can do that next time then. But I can't equip the best shield in the game. Can you stop? Can you stop? Attack! Fuck the fucking way shrine, please. Alright, um... Well, maybe we might be able to have time for Hellworm, then. It's a level 60 uh, mini bot or optional boss, so... this okay I just need to get back to where like the Ultima thing is the uh, Hellworm fight is actually easy to unlock, so uh, we'll just go do that. He is weak to Holy. Uh, sadly, I only have one character that actually does Holy damage, so... A little bit of an, up an upsetting fact, I'm not gonna lie. The two best Holy dam damagers in the entire mod are all under one character. White Mage, and it's... Um, Archer. They're both under one character. Oh, fuck you. There's nowhere safe. Thank God. I only hate this place because it's just really annoying to get through.
All right. We are back in the easy part of the Great Crystal. Really wish they put a gr uh, an orange crystal down here, like in front of Ultima. Like especially after all the shit you had to do to get down here and to get to Ultima, it would have been really nice if that was an orange crystal. Cause you have to go all the way back. Fuck the Garu, the cop, cop of Garu Vegan. Only re like I said, I didn't want to come back here, but the only reason, but like considering what I have left to do, I don't see why I can't. I literally only have a handful of fights left. And I and I think part of me is too is like I'd like to say I'd legitimately beat Omega Mark, even if it's under a mod. Like I legitimately did it. And I didn't cop out by using broken weapons. Or, or reverse. Yeah, like, there, there's gonna be no reverse strat because the um, mod creator hated how broken reverse was and removed it. I think it would be kind of cool, though, to play through this game with permanent, with nothing but permanent reverse on. And just see if the enemy AI is like, if there's any any people of AI, like any enemy AI that is actually uh, set to handle that. Like, are there any enemies in the game that actually try to heal you? Do any of them have Gambit set specifically for that task? I've kind of given up on the rest of the party, Party, not going to lie. This is a very tried and true team. One's immune to statuses and buffs and heals, and the others are take half damage from uh, elements. So, it's very tried and true. Alright, so I need to head to... No. One more. Oh, by the way. It was that you that needed to equip that. Uh, I wanted to go here. I just want to top up on any items that got used. I know it wasn't many, but you never know. Alright, so now I need to save. Oh, I don't need to save, but I'm going to save. Yizmat does not get accepted until every single hunt in the game is... Every other hunt in the game is done. The thing is, the cool thing is, is this shield that provides like half resistance to all elements is actually better than most shields. Because I could have like... Going in, like, oddly enough, despite being weak, a dark elemental enemy that is weak to, um... That is weak to holy, its signature move, Judgment, is a holy move. Um, and I could equip the holy shield, but a lot of bosses just...
this point, why not? Not many fly flying foes left, and uh, it'll at least do a, a, lo a lot more damage. Get your coupon. Got us work on the wind on the mills this time. I've been working on windmill number ten coupon. Trouble is, I pretty much finished my work, but the mill still won't start. Maybe there's something jamming one of the cogs. Who's been making all that noise? Kupo shouldn't sneak up on people like that. So he was basically. I think he was trying to. Uh, yeah, he was trying to um, study a particular um, uh, worm, but it was the one that you killed during a hunt. And he was asleep during it. Give him the scale, he gives you, um, he. faster to, to uh, take the straw. Wrong way. I need to go to the Shoal Cave Palace, which is why, uh... We'll change the silver arrows for this fight.
I need to get to here. Zero damage, what will I ever do? As I'm smacking them for 15k. Now granted, I am speeding this up a bit by being 99, but I fought a lot of these bosses at 99 anyway. Like, I, I literally just kind of goofed around until I was 99 and then fought them. Just gotta open these in, an, in the order, going in a circle. You have to enter from the east, which is why I left the map and came back in. I don't know if I had to reset it like that, but I did anyways. Just to be sure. amazing that these the enemies here are still like in the 30s even though like the boss behind the, like granted i guess granted um you can enter here earlier like as basically as soon as you have access to that hunt you can get here but the boss is level 60 all right we'll fight this guy and then we'll call it a stream Introducing the Hellworm. Probably one of the most badass worm designs. So if you see, you see that, that bar of health beneath him? Um... That is every additional health bar he has. He's susceptible to Berserk? Are you serious?
Oh my god. Him being susceptible to Berserk is so hilarious. Because he can't do anything but attack when he's Berserk. He'll attack faster and a bit stronger, but I'd rather have that than him risk him using literally anything else. What is he doing that's insta-killing people? Oh no, he seems to only attack one at one guy at a time, so... Judgment. This is his signature attack. He does this every 10% health. So he is guaranteed to do this nine times the, in, in the fight. Oh my god. Okay, uh, this might be bad. His boss just got stopped. Spawn is stopped too. That ribbon was a good idea. And Fran can uh Asuna in this uh in the mod he'll stop, so that's really nice. I also have Fran set up for re remedies too, so. So while he was berserked, we basically managed to um Uh, knock his health down enough that he got to use the move twice. And uh, we might- we might see it again here. I remember the first time I fought this guy in the PS2 version. I was so hyped, like, I planned a day around it. I literally had my game, or my PS2, sorry, and my, like, mini TV, it was like a portable DVD player, like, all just, like, set up in my grandma's trailer's Florida room. And, like, I had, like, everything preset, like, and I just, like, you know, I got this, I got this. I think I failed once, but for the most part, I'm just kind of doing what I'm doing now, I'm just kind of letting it run. Like, I'm not doing anything. The game is literally playing itself. The only thing is it was way- I had it way better optimized in um, the PS2 version, but that makes sense because of the license boards where everyone can equip everything. Right? So it's like everyone cast their own bravery and faith as what was needed. Everyone casted- or one person casted protect, one cast- one person casted shell, one person casted haste. We're, we're nearing the halfway point. He's berserked again. Judgment. So we're past the halfway point now.
Back in action, let's go. Another judgment. It's kind of relaxing, not gonna lie. I'm just gonna step away for a second. I'm just gonna go fill up my water bottle. I'll let the game play. I'm just gonna mute. leader change like I'm literally just watching this play <laughs> <laughs> like, I'm not even playing the game. <laughs> I'm just letting the whole thing play out. I'm now, keep in mind, I did use the reverse strategy when I fought this guy before, so. Now, he's level 62, so I'm all, also over leveled. But the thing is, that's how I, that's why I like this game, so to speak. Because of the defense. The fact that defense is exclusively on armor, and the highest armor in the game still isn't necessarily enough to break anything. Just with the camera angles could be better here. Um, he has me literally up against the wall. I cannot believe he's susceptible to Berserk. That's hilarious. I feel like that alone is making this fight super easy. It's eliminating a lot of his ability to do almost anything. Okay, that's not something I plan for. Uh... Pretty much have to be on Fran, right? Because she's immune to it. Um, there's not really anything though I want to get rid of for it. She needs everything. The only thing I can think of is if I get rid of regen since uh, Bosch can cast it. And I'll just leave it. It's only happened once in the entire fight. Oh no. I don't know if this is going to be worth doing, but I may need to do it. Are you kidding me? I didn't even get the play the the experience of being killed. that oh my god it is actually irritating I will fucking weaken Vaughn if it means he doesn't get susceptible to that anymore
Oh my god. This is dumb. Now I just simply don't have to worry about it anymore. I had to weaken my team a little bit, but I am so fucking done. I think I'm going to bump up the healing, the healing range. I'll do it after this pet. I think I'm going to change it to 60 for potions. I'm gonna think I'm gonna change it to 70 for spells. So that way I don't like burn through shit, the shit here. I already know they got stopped again. Oh, this is gonna be fun. Literally caught in a heel loop. Almost dead. Second last health bar. Last health bar. I'm just going to switch back to the uh, Philpolians now. Got him. Radiant Savior. The lure shield absolutely helped in that fight. Oh, 
That is, I think, the best evasive shield in the game. So it's no, it doesn't provide any elemental resistances, but it's a flat 40 to both. So resistance-wise, it's uh, evasion-wise, it's the best shield in the game. When I head back to the port, I want to restock up on items because I'm not dumb enough to think I'm going to remember to do so for next stream. Because next stream is where we end it. Next stream, we will be finishing up the last of the hunts. Facing off against the Omega Mark and then fighting Vayne. Part 14 will be the finale. just stick into non-elemental now a lot of the bosses have like resistances and crap so if i can't target the weakness it's easier for me to just go non-elemental So Zodiac, Ultima, and um, Zodiac, Ultima, and Hellwyrm all give you achievements. I don't think Omega Mark does, but I do know that um, I do believe Yzmat does. Uh, there is also a fishing mini game, but I have no intention of doing that. The only funny thing out of the fishing mini game, to me, is that Gilgamesh appears during it, but he's not voiced. Because he heard the story that there's this legendary thing, but he realized, but it's just a fishing rod, and it's it's an upgraded fishing rod which you need to catch this one fish, catch him ten times, and he gr gives you a badge, and it's one of the three badges. The other two are granted by beating Omega Mark. And by beating Yizmat. And uh, you hand in those, you trade in those badges. And in this game, I think it gives you all the, with the mod, it gives you like the Sword of Kings, the Treaty Blade, and all the guest character weapons. Um, in the uh, base game, it gives you the Worm Hero Blade, which is garbage because by then you have literally nothing left to do in the game. That's why I like the Zodiac Gauge, because you can actually get that blade in trial mode. And, um... And in the base game, you don't need a license for it. So you could literally get six of them. I've seen some videos of some how powerful some guys can get before even a certain point in the game. So theoretically, if you could... You could get the Worm Hero Blade really early because it's just uh, rank. It's level fifty, and you just have to steal it from uh, from Famfrit. And if you just do that six times, then you can farm the uh, 
farm it all you want. Or then, uh, then um, in the base game, you have an awesome greatsword. Well, it's slow as all hell, but it's guaranteed to hit twice. It's wholly elemental, which, you know, give or take. But for your, it's the best stat stick for a mage in the game. Because it's permanent haste and bravery. Or permanent bravery and faith, I mean. And for a black mage who can't cast their own faith... Uh, it's perfect if you don't mind, uh, you know, re reduced elemental bonuses and stuff. Yeah, that guy being... Res uh, that guy being affected by Berserk is literally what... It w was literally his downfall. The entire thing was made a joke because of that. save and we'll call it a stream. I did not expect to be streaming for four hours today, but you know, I'll take it. All right, so that is today's stream. I managed to successfully collect every single Esper in the game. Maxed every license port. Uh, used a little bit of a boost to get everyone to 99 just to try and fast forward this a little bit. Look, I'd be grinding to 99 to fight Yiz... Likely, potentially fight Yizmot and definitely fight Omega Mark. I literally just saved myself some time. I turned what would probably be like two or three more streams into one. So, you know, give me a break on that. I've already streamed this game. I'm just doing this to... Pl because I realized, hey, I found a way to play with the mod without having enemies beat the shit out of me. And then I realized, well, that's fun, but I want to have some for different type of restriction to change up how uh, the game plays. So it's not just a literal repeat of what I just did a year ago. Um, so yeah, so I'm... Uh, I'm, uh, just, you know, I'm just having fun. Like, I'm, man, the fact, like, the whole thing came to a head when I was able to use Quake uh, on Chaos. Like, no joke. That was a huge, huge factor to me, was being able to use Quake ja on, on Chaos. That was, like, the first thing that hit my head when I used it, when I, when I got this mod. Um... Like, like way back before I even streamed, I believe, like, was that I had a means of hitting chaos offensively. Um, Bellius doesn't really matter. Like, there, I'm sure there are other enemies that Water Gut can work on. But when you fight Bellius originally, um, you have access to the Water spell, and it's not outclassed yet. It's if you're still running water, you're still running arrow, you're still running fire, you're still running blizzard and thunder. You're using the low level spells. Um, so water is not outclassed. You can get the water shot on the gun um, by then. So you have you should have a decent amount of elemental advantage against Bellius without any uh, real problems. But yeah, so next... So tomorrow's stream is, I believe, Dungeons. Yes, we are playing Dungeons again. Um, the next Final Fantasy stream on Saturday will be a guaranteed finale to Final Fantasy XII, and in which we will then begin to take on... Final Fantasy... Um, or moving on to Golden Sun, one of my favorite game franchises of all time. So with that said, my name's Damon Kamiya. I'm the Omni King, and be you friend, foe, or member of the Omni Council. I'm going to see you later. Goodbye, everyone.